Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Uh, last week, we had a little bit of a dramatic uh, beginning with a, a huge bulldozer with a sledgehammer banging on the ground next door to my apartment hotel and was shaking the entire uh, hotel. So, and then I had to go to a coffee shop nearby. So it was a little bit rock and rolly and the broadcast, we couldn't really, we recorded it, but it had no values as far as putting it up uh, on Facebook or making a video out of it or making a podcast out of it. So hopefully if things go well, uh, we won't have much problems. Um, I'm in Tulum, Mexico. I'm in the process of moving here. And what I discovered is there's a lot of construction is going on all over, all over this town. So um, unless you go to a very specific neighborhood that everything's already built, um, build up, uh, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of noise and this is what it is. So what to do? You just have to go and roll with it, with life, like what's going on right now on the planet. And um, that's what it is. There's no way out of it. You have to do what you have to do. I haven't decided what we're going to talk about today yet. So I would say, how about if we do a nice short meditation um, and then let's see what's going to come. There's a couple of different things that I would like to talk about, but uh, it's not really certain yet. So when I don't know what to do, I basically stay in this moment and I sink into the sink in within myself into the presence and I just wait for the answer to come. Um, just like at this point in our lives, a lot of us don't know what to do, what to think about what is going on. Um, should I stay? Should I go? Should I move? Should I keep my job? Should I quit my job and find something I can do online? Um, should I stay in the current situation with my current partner? Should I divorce? Should I? There's a lot of different unknowns, uncertainties in this point. Um, Nobody really knows. Maybe, maybe some people are on the very top. They know what's going on or what's happening. But I, the rest of us don't know. And well, first of all, you never know because it's an illusion. Even though, even though you think you know, you still don't know. Because you never know what life is going to do next. But in the apparent reality, in the apparent world, that it appears to be real, it looks like it's real, and it looks like you have a pattern, you have a rhythm, like before the pandemic. You kind of think you know, but you still really don't know, because you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen this afternoon. You just think you do. But your mind goes to ease and you're kind of more comfortable with everything because you're under the illusion or an assumption that you know what's going on and there's a pattern. So you're following that pattern and it gives you a sense of false security. It's just a sense that you are secure and you are good to go. 
it's an illusion. Now, everything is in your face or it's in our face. It's like uncertainty is in your face and every day things change, new rules come or you're allowed to go out, then you're not allowed to go out. You can go here and have, eat, but if you go there, you have to wear a mask. If you're walking into the restaurant, like in the US, while you're walking into the restaurant, you have to wear a mask, but when you go sit in the restaurant, you take the mask off. I mean, it's such a stupid uh, thing. Um, it's just like when you have to go to the priest, and you make a confession about your sin, sins. You know, it's like, what kind of stupidity is that? To go to the priest and make a confession about your sins. Um, so this is one of those stupid things happening, but it's happening. And uh, then the gate opens up a little bit. You're allowed to do this. And then you're so happy because now you're allowed to go and eat in a restaurant outdoors. And then for three months, you're not even allowed to do that. So when you're given that little freedom, you're super excited. So it's pull push, cat and mouse. It's a play. It's a lila what is happening right now. So we roll with it, basically. That's what's going on. Anyway, um, back to what we were gonna do. Let's just simply do a very simple meditation. I have talked about this before and I shared this with, with you before. It's very simple. You simply, easily, effortlessly, follow your thoughts back. Follow your thoughts on the way to the source of your thoughts. Go back to the source of your thoughts. Trace your thoughts back. And somebody, I told somebody yesterday, a few days ago at the beach and uh, about this, and, uh, and then I explained like, okay, how did you get to the beach? How did you get here? Why don't you follow back the path that you came to the beach? So you can do that, follow it back, go back. So close your eyes and look inside, see where, where do your thoughts come from? Where did they come from? Go to the source of your thoughts. Trace them back to the source of your thoughts and see what happens. And if you be consistent, consistently you follow your thoughts back to the source, you will discover that you fall into a deep silence. You get quiet.
Just hang in there in the space. Just simply stay in this space. Hang out in this space. And don't worry if every once in a while the mind comes, thoughts come and go. Just hang out in the space, stay in this place without trying to force anything. Simply 
melt in and allow the transmission to take place. When we collectively spend time together and come into the unified field of oneness, space opens up.
just hang out in the space. Simply being here without an agenda, not trying to get to anywhere because really there is nowhere to get to. That trying to get to somewhere takes you away from the magic of now, this moment. You go in the world of thoughts because it's a thought in your mind telling you you need to get somewhere, which is outside of here. And there's nowhere outside of here. This is the only thing it is. Here is the only thing that exists, that ever existed and ever will exist. Anybody tells you anything else is fooling you or they don't know anything. It's just BS. Here is the only thing. Now is the only thing exists. Whether you like it or you don't like it. So just surrender to now. Here. Relax into it. Take a deep breath and just Pull back your energy, ah. and then allow here to reveal itself, here to guide you, to take you. Slowly, slowly come back. So when you meditate regularly and you are successful with meditation, 
you create a system and a, and a way of disconnecting from the world of the thoughts, from the maya, into shifting your attention to the one-pointedness, shifting your attentions to being still. So, okay, um, for the sake of the uh, topic of today, we're going to talk about stillness. What is stillness? What does it mean to be still? And you may have heard that many times from different people or from me of be still, stay still. What does it mean? What does stillness mean? Being still, you're still, you're, okay? You can physically be still, stay still, all right? Okay, you're taking a photo from your friend and you say, stay still, don't move. And the person is doing this and you're taking photos and you're mess the photos coming up messed up because the person is moving. So you tell them, hey, stay still. So that's in the physical world, or you drive around and you see buildings are still, the buildings are not shaking. Trees are moving, but buildings are still. So, but what is inner stillness? What does that mean? Inner stillness, to stay still inside. What does it mean to be still inside? Anybody? Anybody wants to share? Inner stillness. Inner stillness and inner silence are extremely important on the spiritual seeker's path for liberation. Most of our lives, we're not still. When we're not still means that we get identified with what is moving. What is moving affects you. And you get very identified with it. What is moving? What's moving is the news, you hear about the news, the world is moving. It's always moving. Things changing, you get new news, new events, new dramas, things happen, especially the media. They love to focus on negative stuff and drama because negative stuff and drama, first of all, it sells much better than anything else and keeps your attention on itself so your attention goes on the drama of life. And what happens is that you become like a yo-yo. Your emotions go up and down because your attention goes on what is moving, what comes and goes, like the news, like the dramas of life, like people come into your life and they leave. You fall in love with someone and then they leave you. So it's something that comes and goes. It's moving. Or your thoughts. Your thoughts come and go. They're moving. And you get identified with your thoughts. So you come out of stillness. And what about emotions? Emotions, emotion, they're moving. Your emotions come and go, and you get involved with them, you get identified with them, so they take you up and down. Have you ever imagined if you didn't have any ups and downs in your life? 
And what does it mean if you don't have ups and downs? Like you don't really get very much angry or you get you don't get super excited and you don't get super sad. Have you ever imagined that? Imagine that for one moment, that you're not really, you're in a place, you have developed a capacity that you're not really being affected, but by what thing, what comes and what goes. So you're kind of still, you're here, and everything comes and everything goes, but you're here, you're not going anywhere, you're still. There must be something still, something must in this life be very still and not moving in order to observe, witness and report what is moving. There has to be a measurement point inside you that can measure your ups and downs, your emotional ups and downs. Okay, you're depressed, you're, you feel really great, then you're depressed, then you feel great, you, you're depressed. There has to be something inside you that is always as the zero point. It's the zero point, it's not affected. There is no ups and downs to it. So your ups are getting compared to this place and your downs are getting compared to this place. So that's how you know you are happy or you're depressed. There has to be, otherwise, how would you know you're happy? How would you know you're sad? How do you figure that out? And based on what? What are you comparing it to? It must be compared to something. Unconsciously, you're not aware of it. But you've been doing it all of your life. All of your life, you are reporting through your mind. You wake up in the morning and your mind gives you a report. Every day when you get up in the morning. And throughout the day, your mind gives you a report. Oh, I really so bored. Oh, I'm really afraid. Oh, I'm really depressed. Oh, really? Seriously? You're depressed? How are you depressed? What is depression? How can you be depressed? Depressed against what? Depression against what? Or happiness against what? Well, because I, I'm depressed because I know when I'm happy. Okay, so now you're comparing depression against happiness. Or you're comparing happiness against depression. Is that what you think you're doing? Really? Is that how you know if you're depressed or you're happy? Because you're comparing happiness against depression? That's how you know which one you're at. That's what you think you're doing. But that's not what you're doing. What you're doing unconsciously, you're not even aware of it. No one has ever told you. Your daddy, your mommy, your teacher, no one told you this. You have no way of knowing it. All of your life, you're going to go through this thing until you die. And everybody else surrounding you does exactly the same thing. So there's no way of figuring it out until grace, grace comes in your life. Grace comes and fishes you out. You're in this ocean. You've swam too far away and you're about to be drowned. Into what? In your ups and downs, in your emotions, in your up and down, up and down, up and down, in the craziness of the mind, then 
heaven opens, Her Majesty Lord God feels sorry for us or whatever, comes, picks you up and pulls you out, brings you back home from getting drowned. While we're playing our games, we're playing these silly games, and we think we figured life out and we're trying to manipulate it and do this and do that, blah, 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 blah. Little silly games. These are like child, childish games. And you know, don't worry, I played them too for a long time. And then grace comes and pulls you out. And if you're lucky, you realize there must be something in you built in already. A measurement point, a point that you can measure things against that. Everything gets measured against that. Like, for example, you say, I'm getting old, all right? Zarathustra, I'm 70 years old, I'm getting old. Or Zarathustra, I am 30, 30 years old. Against what? You're 30 years old against what? What are you old against? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought like when you say I'm 25 years old, I'm 55 years old, 55 years against what? Span of life, humanity, millions of years, planet has been around, or from the zero point that you were born. Isn't that the zero point you're measuring against? And what is old? I mean, if you're 10 days old, you are old. If you're five days old, you are still old. If you're a day old, you were just born, and one day, you're one day old. What is old? Old against what? If you want to compare you against Mount Everest, that's been here ever since, ever since, ever since, then who's older? You're older or Mount Everest? If we want to compare you to the planet Earth, then you're just a baby. You're a newborn. You may be 80 years old in this life, but you're a baby in comparison to the planet Earth because it's been here for billions of years. So what is old? What does it mean? It's an agreement and a measurement of defining something, but it starts from a zero point. It has to be a zero point. So I am 65 years old. From the point that I was born to now, I'm 65. From the point I was born, I am 35. You are comparing it, the number of years you've been on this planet, to a zero point. Okay, we agree on that one? Yes? Give me a hands up. I'm, I want to make sure you're not hypnotized and you're not falling asleep. Thanks. Okay, so I am very, very depressed based on what? How do you know you're depressed? Because you don't feel good. You feel shitty. Things don't go your way. You feel down, you're not motivated, your energy is not there. So you feel like, eh, 
life is not worth living. So you feel bad against the zero point. There is something, so anything below this, you feel bad. Anything above it, you feel good. Normally, you don't think of anything when everything, you feel good and everything's rosy and everything's going your way. And hooray, fiesta, you know, party, drink tequila, blah, 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 blah. drink vodka, blah, 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 blah. drink the wine, happy, everything is good. But then when from the zero point you go down, uh, I don't know about the life, I don't know if I will live anymore and what is the meaning of the life and life sucks and where is this gonna go and I'm worried about the future and I'm not really worried about future myself, but I'm worried about future of my children and humanity and blah, 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 blah. These are games we play with ourselves, basically. So what I'm suggesting to you is very simple. Bring, look for this place inside yourself Look for that zero point. Look for that place that doesn't change. That your emotions getting compared to that place. That place which is aware of your ups and your downs. Find that place. Look for it. Search it. Pay attention. Let's not finish this academy and you fall back in your old day, old ways. Oh, I love Zaratustra's academy. It makes me very calm for a couple hours. And then you go back to your old patterns and doing everything you were doing before. No. Apply this teaching. Wake up. Wake up. Just wake up. Slap yourself in the face and wake yourself up. Don't fall back into your old pattern. Use these applications. Use these tools. Don't just use the academy to feel good for a couple hours because it's useless. Unless you really use the teachings, the wisdom, these gems, these pearls are being given to you, you apply it in your daily life. Otherwise, it's worth nothing. You have wasted your time. Pay attention, my brothers, sisters. You can become free. Freedom is available. Freedom is here. We have it. We have freedom in our store. It's available now. <laughs> Come. Come and take it. Look for this place. There is a place inside you. It's been there from childhood. From the time you were born, you came with it. So it's already there, I guarantee you, 100% that it's there. All you have to do is pay attention, look for it, search, search it. That there is a place inside you, it's always like this. Is looking, that's the zero point, it's not moving. It's not an emotional state, okay? So let's eliminate what, maybe you can find out, figure out what that is, but maybe we can identify what it's not because sometimes that's easier in our lives, okay? Let, let's say, you know what? 
I don't really know what I want in my life. Okay, cool. I understand. But let's identify what you don't want. Sometimes it's easier that way. I don't know, Zarajistra, what is the goal of my life? Okay, I, I don't know what my mission is. All right, I understand. I went through that. We all go through that phase in our lives that we don't know what is our mission in this life. But what is not your mission? What is it you don't want? You can do that. So eliminate what it's not. And then you narrow it down to what you, you may, it gives you a chance to find out what you want by eliminating what you don't want. That makes it easier. Same thing here. Okay, I don't really understand what you mean by this still point inside me, Zarathustra. I, I can't understand it. What do you mean by stillness? Okay, cool. I understand. Let's see what is not stillness. What's not stillness is anything that moves, anything that comes and goes. Anything that comes and knows, goes, is not stillness. Stillness is that which doesn't come and doesn't go. It's always here. And that is in you. It's within yourself. And once you discover it within yourself, then you begin to identify to it because you realize identifying to this part of yourself doesn't have ups and downs and the freedom begin to come into your life. The more you identify to the stillness within yourself, the freer you become, the more space opens up in your life something expands in your life something opens in your life space opens up so you may say well how does that happen How does that, by identifying, by connecting to one place inside myself, which is stillness, how does space open? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. What do you mean, Zaratustra? Right? Is that cool so far? Are we on the same page together? I want to make sure we're here. Good. All right. For that, I have to explain a little bit of something else, and then I'm going to come to this so you understand it better. For those of you, some of you maybe are here for the first time with me, and uh, so... When, you, when you're a kid, you're five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, before you get conditioned heavily, okay, a lot of times you're hanging out by yourself, you're playing by yourself, you're in your room playing with your toys, you're playing your imaginary with your friends, uh, you're riding your bicycle, you're playing football, whatever, you're just playing, you're hanging out. There is a sense that you have inside you that you are. 
you have a sense of I am. And you don't know anything about spirituality. No one has taught you about these kind of things. And rightfully, you don't need to know anything about sir, because you're a kid. So, but you have a sense that you are. You know that you are. Nobody needs to come and tap on your shoulder, reminds you every 10 minutes that, hey, Johnny, you are, you exist. Hey, Susie, you exist. You know you exist. You know you are. You don't even think about it. There's no thoughts about it. You simply know that you are. There is a sense of being. And you start growing up, you start getting older. As you get older, that sense of being always remains. So what happens normally around age 12, 13 to boys and girls? We go through a process called puberty. So our body starts to go through a change. The girl starts growing boobs and their hips, and then you go through your meniscal process. And the, the, the guys start growing a little bit of facial hair or chest hair, and your body starts changing. And as your body starts changing, your agenda kind of changes too. You are, before, you, you're very happy playing with toys or doing certain things, da, 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 da. Now you are more interested in boys or you're more interested in girls. So your agenda is changing too because your physical body has changed, your hormones is changing, and you're starting to, not, from a child, you're becoming a young girl. And from a boy, you're becoming, you're growing up, you're, you're, and slowly you're, you're turning, you're not a man, but it's changing. So, but you're 13 years old and you're going through this weird process, you know, your boobs are growing or you're getting hair on your face. It's kind of weird. You're kind of excited. Sometimes you don't know what's happening to your body. You know, it is an interesting process in life. A lot of us don't even remember it because it was so long ago. But you see it. If you have kids, you can observe it with your children that is happening with them. And things changing. And as this is happening, you still have a sense of being. You still know that you are. Your agenda changed and your body is changing, but your sense of being, sense that you exist, doesn't go away. You still have the sense of being. So now you're going to get a little bit older. You're getting around 16 or 18. You're starting to have a little bit of your own autonomy. You're allowed to go out at night and come home a bit later, depending, you know, your parents and everything. Or you're, you're allowed to drive a car. You're allowed to date. You can have a beer or a glass of wine, depending where you live. You're starting to be treated a little bit. Your, your society decides treat you differently and give, you know, holding you accountable and more responsible. And you're allowed to have more freedom of doing things, but you still have a sense of being. That sense that you are is still there. So I'm gonna go forward. Let's say now you're around 22, 23, 24. You finish your high school, you know, you're thinking about going to college, you're thinking about going traveling around the world, exploring the world, you're thinking about maybe getting married, 
It all depends on your culture, where you are, your mentality, but generally, you're more responsible. You're 18, 19, you may do some stupid stuff, you may get you're getting drunk, you may be driving fast, you may be heavily partying or doing drugs or this and that, or you may be very athletic, whatever is your story. But the sense of I am, the sense of being remains the same sense of being as it was before. That sense of being does not change. So you get older, the sense of being is always there. Let's say you get married. Let's say you have a kid, you have children, you're in your 30s, you still have this sense of being. And today, right now, you're on the spiritual path, you're searching, you're looking for freedom, you're looking for peace, you're looking for answers of life. But in the midst of all of it, one thing is for sure, you are here, you are. Can you say, I am not? Can you deny your existence? Can you say, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not here. Of course you're here. You know you're here. You don't need to go to school for it. You don't need to go on a course or you don't need to go to a retreat for me to tell you you're here. You know you're here. It's very obvious to yourself because you have a sense of being. Your sense of being remains the same. This sense of being is also the same. Let's say you got heartbroken, you fell in love with this man or woman, and you thought you're twin flames, and this is your soulmate, and you're crazy about each other, and you're gonna be together forever. Everything you met under the full moon, all the planets were aligned when you met. Everything was together. Five years gone by, and you go through a breakup, he or she leaves you, and you are in a complete emotional breakdown. You're hurting. You're in a lot of emotional pain. Anyone's gone through that? But you still know you are. You still, in the midst of loss, your dad passed, your son died, your sister died. You're hurting emotionally, but you still know that you are. You still know that you are. The sense of being remains. You lost money, you made a lot of investments and you lost a big chunk of your money. Your body is shaking, you so, feel very insecure, you feel sad, you feel like an idiot for losing money. Or you made a lot of money. You put your money in Bitcoin and stock market, you made, you made tons of money. And you're super excited. But you still have that sense of being. The sense of being does not change. There's a stillness here. There is a continuity of a presence of something, of a being that continuously here.
something is always here. Something doesn't go up and down. Something doesn't change based on the new or old president of the US or the new king or new prime minister. Something doesn't come and go. Something is always here. You can call it stillness. You can call it witness. You can call it consciousness. You can call it presence. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's a, the word you're using is a point of reference. Something is always here. Something doesn't change. Look for that within yourself. Search it. Find that. And as you find it, identify with it. Identify with that which is always here. That which is always here. And bring your attention to it. And you will see that you really don't have ups and downs. You will see you don't have ups and downs. Ups and downs, they appear to you, but you're not the one who goes up and down. I don't know how else I can explain this. I already gave you the secret. If there is one. Oh, Bazar Tustra, I want more. I want to go higher. I'm sorry, there is nothing else after that. This is it. Find this. No, there must be more. No, I'm sorry, there is no more. This is it. Anything more is a creation of the mind. And you have to come to this first. And even if there is more, you can never get to it because if you can't figure this out, you can't go anywhere else. You got to come to this first. And when you come to this, you find this and you start to identify with this part of who you are because that's the real you. So naturally, a phenomena happens that you relax, you calm down, you chill, you relax. Ah. Ah. You fall into the space. You fall into this recognition. Something still, something doesn't change. News comment says, in the next year, a billion people are going to die. One billion people are going to die from the COVID-19 in this coming year. Everybody's, oh my God. and you're, you're like this. You're still, you're identifying to the stillness, not the news, not the news in your mind, not the emotions. You're not identifying to what is coming and going. You're identifying to what you have discovered inside yourself, which is stillness. Everybody's running out, jumping out the boat. 
Everybody's running up for the hills because Godzilla is coming to eat you. Godzilla is coming. COVID-19 is coming to kill you. And the awakened ones are just sitting there like, okay. Why? Because that's a moving phenomenon. What can a moving phenomenon do to that which is always still? The stillness, seeing what's moving. What's moving cannot have any effect on that which is still. What's moving can only have effects on that which is moving not that which is so. What could a stormy day with clouds do to sunshine? The sun is always the sun. It has no effect on the sun. You can have a thousand days of bad weather every day. What does it do to the sun? The sunshine doesn't give a shit. The sun is the sun, is far, far remote. It doesn't care, it's always the sun. Once you find stillness inside yourself and you recognize this part of you, what could COVID-19 or Anunnaki or Illuminati or the communist or the Nazi or the terrorist or the Baptist or, or the whatever it is do to you. Once you discover the stillness inside yourself, you are the king. You are the Lord. You're not a beggar any longer begging. What can they, what will you be afraid of when you discover it, that which never changes and it's always here, the being, the presence, the sense of I am is always I am. What could disease, virus, nuclear bomb, terrorism do to the I am? They're powerless at the presence of I am, of the stillness because they all come and go. They're phenomena. You have discovered something that doesn't change and you identify with it. That something is always here. It's always been here. It was always be here. It's permanently here. What could old age, young age, cancer, economical ups and downs, do to that which is always here. Find that inside yourself, my friend, and be free forever. It's here, it's in you. You're not looking for it. You are looking for security outside of this place. And that's why you don't find it. You're looking for false security. You're looking for apparent security. You're looking for a security that comes and goes. It's illusion. It's not there. No matter what you do, you're never ever going to find it. It's short term and it's a false illusory security for a few days, for a few months, for a few years. 
But then something's going to pull the rock from under your feet. Like what is happening right now? Right now, what's going on in the world is the perfect example of the truth of what is. And that's designed by the boss. Her Majesty, the Supreme, has decided to awaken this planet. It's like enough is enough. I had enough of this. You guys are too asleep. Let me wake you guys up. I'm going to create this thing and pull the rock from under your feet. Let's see what are you made of. You say I'm spiritual. I'm having my feathers. I got my crystals. I'm a shaman. Well, then why are you afraid? You are done all this spiritual stuff. And you got all these medals, you've done all these courses, you did ayahuasca in Peru, you went to all kinds of gurus, you did all this stuff. Why are you so afraid of dying? Why are you hanging out to your couple pennies? You said you, you are a shaman, then show me what you got. Stay in the fire with me. Walk into the fire. Let's see what you got. I want to know what you got. Uh, otherwise, it's bullshit. You haven't got anything. You haven't, you haven't arrived anywhere. You're full of shit. You're only fooling yourself. That's all you do. Because you want to hang on to your little things, but you also want God. No, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. You got to let that stuff go if you want the boss. You want the beloved, then you have to jump into the fire and let, let go of everything to be with the beloved. If you want the beloved, you want the soulmate, then you have to show up. You can't just hang on to your stuff. It doesn't work. You're fooling yourself. But you want freedom? Then find that part inside yourself which is unshakable, indestructible. It would never be destroyed. It's always here. And then you're free, free from fear, fear from death. You find that you are eternal. And a few people throughout the history of humanity found that. And they're in history. Gautama Buddha, the Christ, Krishna, Master, Ramana Maharshi, Muktananda, Nim Karoli Baba, the list, Amaji, Mamritananda Mai, Hafez, Rumi, Kabir. Few people on this planet found that. And they are eternal now. And you can do that because it's here. It's, it's inside you. You already have it. You were born with it from childhood. You're just not paying attention. Your attention is not there. You're too hypnotized with what is going on in the world and too hypnotized by your emotional ups and downs and your thoughts. So you're not looking at the right place. It's here. It's here. It's always been here. And it's right now. Just shift your attention. That's all you need to do. Shift your attention. And there is help here. 
We are here to help you to discover it. We are here with you. You haven't been abandoned. You're not abandoned. Don't fall into that trap. We are here. Comprende? You got it? Good. I'm happy to hear that. Anybody has any questions for me? It's okay, you can ask questions. No matter how basic is the question, it's not a problem. It's your first time with me, you can ask me a question. I'm here. I'm happy to, if I can, if I have the answer, I'll be more than happy to answer your question. You can either wave at me or unmute yourself or write on the chat box. I don't even know if we have anything. Or nothing in the chat. So anyway, um, we had to cancel our uh, free online self, uh, free online global self awakening. Uh, the retreat that I set it up, I for now canceled it because of my situation here. It's not stable. I haven't. I'm looking to settle myself here, and I'm still living in a apartment hotel and internet is so-so and then there's noise so I couldn't really offer a a retreat so we decided Amir and I we talked about it we decided we're going to postpone it for now so till I settle myself and then I'm sure that I have proper internet and I'm in an environment which is quiet and I can really focus on uh, broadcasting. But I do like to do it. And um, especially now in this particular time that we're in uh, and hopefully be of service and help to my brother sisters. So I will do it for sure. It's a seven day retreat. It's a free event. Um, I just need to put my ducks in a row, and that's going to take a little bit of time. It's been a little bit challenging uh, coming here and trying to put everything together. So, but that's part of life. You get challenged. Everybody's challenged right now, right? You follow your intuition, you stay in your center. Existence throws different things at you. Existence pulls a rock from under your feet and ooh, sometimes you're like this, but then you just come back to your center again. You don't sit down and cry. You don't go into this place that, oh, I'm a victim or why me or anything like that. You just, it's life. You gotta deal with life. It's not Disneyland. Sometimes it's easy and everything's smooth and goes your way and everything comes. Sometimes you just have to work it. But all is well. All is well. You just hang in there. 
and you keep going forward. And your brothers, sisters show up, help comes, you need the information, it comes to you. It always works out one way or the other. But I just wanted to share with you that um, why I canceled it is, is just because I don't, I'm not settled in the right place yet. <laughs> Hi, Shadi, how are you? Nice to see you. Good seeing you. I know you're working and you're able to, to also connect. And thank you for all your uh, nice messages on Facebook, Instagram. I appreciate it. You're, you're being very lovely, supportive. And feel free, you know, email me if you have any comments. Um, you have questions. Sometimes I'm slow, especially now, because I'm doing so many different things, trying to figure out a lot of different stuff. So uh, sometimes I'm slow in getting back with you. So just, just be patient, but I'll get back with you. I'm not always on it, always. But I got some emails that I haven't responded back yet. Um, what an interesting time in this life, huh? that we're all on the edge. We have the front seat row to this theater, this drama of life. And we're all in the front and we're looking at it, looking at this whole thing. It's interesting, but don't be afraid of it. Inside of it is empty, there's nothing in it. Don't get scared of what you're seeing on the theater, on the screen. It's a movie. It, can, it can't do anything to you. Don't buy into it. It's not real. It's real only in the apparent life. Only in the apparent life is real. In the absolute, it has no reality. You come back to your center. You come back to your heart. You come back to this place that you know for sure, 100%, that the being, your being, you know your being, and you come back here, What can affect it? You come back to your being, to your presence, to this place that you feel the presence of God, you feel love, you know who you are in your essence. What can anything do to that? What could this theater Shenanigan, this image, this appearance can do to your presence. Nothing. It can do nothing. No matter how scary it looks like, no matter how unstable, unstable it looks like, no matter how rocky it appears to be, it can never do anything to the one who has discovered stillness. 
the one who's still, the one who doesn't buy into it, the one who doesn't react to life's lila. You stay centered. And this show cannot do anything to you. And this too will pass. This too is going to pass too. Maybe it takes a few years, but this will change to something else. We don't know to what, but it will, it will change. It will change to something else. I don't know what, but it will change. Because everything changes. It's always changing from one thing to another thing. From one thing to another thing. It's always changing in the presence of that which doesn't change. The witness remains the witness. The eye, the eye that sees all remains the same. It's always seeing what comes and goes. So this is another one of those. Okay. So if there's no questions, then my brothers and sisters, I'm gonna get going. Um, our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. As you're aware, I have pulled uh, the time back because um, I was doing it at 10 a.m. Los Angeles time, which is, I'm in the East Coast um, here. If I want to do it the same time as I was doing it before, it's going to be at 1 p.m., 1 in the afternoon. So I pulled it back. I know for some of you who are in Europe, we used to do it at 7 p.m. Now we're doing it at 6 p.m. So... Um, so as long as I'm here in, in this part of Mexico, I'm going to be doing it at, at the time I did, which is uh, for Europeans, it's going to be at 18 to 20. For the U.S. East Coast, it's going to be 12 p.m. And uh, for the West Coast people, it's going to be 9 a.m. So, okay. So we're going to be doing it next week. I'm committed in broadcasting every week, no matter what. Uh, my website is zaratustra.tv. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, and my pages are Zaratustra 5D. This broadcast is gonna go on YouTube. We're gonna clean it up as always, put it on YouTube. We'll have the entire broadcast as well as we chop it up and the increments of 10 minute, 10 minute videos. Um, so we post it that way as well on YouTube. Those of you who sign up on the Zoom are going to get a copy of this broadcast in the next couple of days, two, three days. And uh, within a day, uh, we're going to have it on, on my podcast, which is the Artistra 5D. Um, what, as far as what I have to offer is the only thing I'm offering on private session and training program is my life training program. Um, I know last week I mentioned I have room for two people. Uh, now I only have room for one student. I can, I can handle, I have my current students, 
but I can take one new person. If someone wants to come in and participate in life training program with me, it's a uh, tailor-made specialty special program which is designed for your needs. You're welcome to email me uh, or WhatsApp me or basically e emailing is the best way. And then I'll make an appointment with you and we'll sit down and talk. We have a consultation for about an hour and we'll go through your needs and uh, how the program works and uh, how much it costs and uh, what is it I can do to help you and whether it's going to work out for you or not. But right now I'm at the point I can only take one more person. So um, feel free to reach out and connect with me. Um, I send you my love, wherever you are, from Tulum, Mexico, uh, this beautiful country, this beautiful land. And uh, if you get a chance, go online and Google Tulum. This is going to be my uh, main home. Uh, though, of course, I'm always connected to Los Angeles and I'm always connected to Sedona and, and Europe. Uh, when we can travel again, I will be touring again, but I don't know when. And uh, I am thinking about setting up a retreat here in Tulum, hopefully maybe in October, maybe if I can, if people can travel, uh, I'm planning on putting something together. So um, keep in touch. Send you a lot of love and light and uh, look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Send you, send you my love and light. Thank you. Namaste.